We left San Francisco with a better feeling after game two than game one. And knowing that we got to use that performance as a baseline. From there, we got to improve. And hopefully, they don't get hot. And uh, for us to get a chance, we gotta, you know, things like that have, have to happen. So hopefully, we, they do. Man, they are as good as anybody on the split action. What, what is the thing you try to make harder for them off of that action specifically? Everybody got to do just a little bit better. Um, maybe we got to pressure the ball a little better. Got to be more physical. Uh, maybe the screener can help a little bit. So, you know, you make decisions based on percentages and what you think is the best strategy with the personnel you have. Uh, so far, they were not enough. Also, you got to consider also that Clay and Durant are two of the best, not only in the league, in the history of the game. One, because of quickness and uh, the other one because of length and quickness. So if, if, if there's somebody that's going to test you with that, it's this team. So, you know, it, it can happen. Uh, we don't even have to consider what happened. As I always say, playoffs is a different story. We are playing a different kind of team. Uh, when we beat, you know, some of the best teams in the league at home, it was once against Houston without Chris Paul, once Golden State without any of the three. So I, I don't think we can take it as a, as a parameter. Uh, it's gone. We gotta, as I said before, consider and play as hard and as aggressive as we did the last game. Try to make a few more shots uh, and uh, you know try to in even increase the energy with the fans and being in our atmosphere. Tony, Tony started off strong coming off the bench after the move was made and struggled since then. What are, what are some of the challenges for a guy who's been a long time starter to, to make that uh, transition? I don't think it's a matter of starting or being a backup. He played some, some great games coming from the back. You know, he's on a funk. He's not feeling that confident. And the fact that he's playing less minutes is not helping him. So um, it's, it's a tough situation. We all been through that. I've been through that last year. Um, and it just happens. It's, it's a problem when it happens in the playoffs when you need everybody performing at their best. But it's completely understandable when you, you've been a starter and a go-to guy for the team for 15 years. And then you move to being a backup and, and not having the, that many opportunities. So he's in a tough spot and uh, he's going to try to fight through it the same way we all do. What did you think this summer when I heard the Spurs had signed Rudy Gay? That it was great to have another scoring option and a very versatile scoring option that can play inside and outside. And the way the game is changing, that basically you need just one big and everybody else shooters and scorers and uh, I thought it was a, 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 a great addition. Um, you know, we missed him for a few months and we, we lost a little rhythm playing with him. But uh, so far, he's been the most reliable, maybe, I, scorer I know, in the playoffs. I know the... Um, on the outside, of course, the LA is being LA. I know the, the coaches were kind of eager to see him and Kawhi and LaMarcus all together. Is it kind of disappointing that group never was really able to come to fruition? For sure. Again, the, the way the... Uh, the game is going, that nowadays, not only you don't need two bigs, you don't need a point guard either. If you see how they, they are playing, mm -hmm. you need just four players that can attack, score, create. If they are six foot tall or 6'11", uh, it doesn't matter. So having had Rudy, LA, and Kawhi at the same time, with the size they have and the, the strength, it could have been a great, uh, extra weapon, uh, but yeah, um, we had them, I don't know, together, or maybe three games, two games, yeah, I don't know. Were you aware of that billboard that went up asking you to come back to the NIC, the Uno Moss billboard that went up recently? Uno Moss? <laughs> no, I wasn't aware. Uh, 
and I wasn't aware. Are you disappointed it's not Dose Boss or Trace? Nah, I don't know why I don't want a white one. <laughs> what's, it, what's up? I was thinking about signing a five year deal, right? and now they are throwing me down. Very disappointing. Well, you you spent a lot of time this week setting what sounds like realistic expectations for this team, and a lot of times you hear athletes talk about we can do anything, you know, as long as we play our best. Is there kind of like, like why aren't you saying we can beat this team? We, 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 I think we, we can beat them. It's not that I'm hopeless here and you know, just waiting for it to finish. I, I think we can beat them. We can give them more trouble. Uh, if Steph was in, there, in the game and playing at their best and they all playing like that, uh, maybe the chances were less. When they have only two of those guys in the court, it, I'm not saying more manageable because as we showed, it was not that manageable. But uh, they are a little more defendable. The realistic thing is that we're not favorites. They're a better team than us. And they, are, they have three all-stars at their prime. So, but we know we can beat them. We, we know we, we can do better than what we did. Um, but you know, I'm not going to feel embarrassed or I'm not going to go compete less if I admit that they're a better team than us. I go and do my best every single minute I'm in there, but understanding what has to happen for us to win. And I, I don't think I'm, I'm being either, uh, I don't know, uh, just not hopeful or... Uh, um, thank you, thank you. I gotta get popping. Thank you. The way I, I feel it.